Now when I'm moving the ball with the arrow keys, I'm changing its position coordinates directly. Instead of that, I will change its velocity, which means the difference of its positions between two consecutive frames. This is how the red ball is moving now, but let's say I want it to make move faster. Then I go here and instead of changing the position by one pixel, I will change it by two. And if I go to the canvas, now the ball is supposed to be moving faster. Let's just change it to 10 instead to make it more obvious. Now I go to the canvas again and yeah, it's definitely moving faster now. If I don't want to change all these four lines whenever I want a different velocity, then I can create a global variable here called velocity and let's just set it to four now and I replace these stands to velocities. Yeah, so this is how the ball moves when the velocity equals 4. And if I want to change it to 12, then all I need to do is modifying the value of the velocity variable. And now it's moving faster. Now, what if I want one ball that's always moving slow and one that's moving fast and then a third one that's moving even faster? Then instead of the velocity variable, I will need a velocity property inside of the ball class and I set it to 1 first and here instead of using the velocity variable I will use the velocity property of the B object and now the ball is moving just like it did in the beginning but if I change the value of the velocity property to 10 then the ball is moving faster now I can change the velocity of the ball by changing the value of the velocity property but there is still room to improve first it can have only one constant velocity once I press the key it starts moving with a specific speed then when I release the key it suddenly stops and second it can only go in eight different directions it can go up down right left up and left, up and right, down and right, down and left. To make that more flexible, I'm going to divide the velocity to two components. I will have a horizontal one along the x, x axis, and I will have a vertical one along the y axis. And instead of changing the coordinates of the ball directly here, I will set the value of one of the velocity components. If the velocity property is 10, then the x component's value will be minus 10 once the left arrow key is pressed and the yu of the left boolean variable is true. And I need two more if statements here because I want to make sure that if none of the arrow keys along one specific axis is pressed, then the velocity of the ball along that axis is zero. So, for example, if the right arrow key is not pressed, and the left arrow key is not pressed, then the velocity of the ball along the x-axis must be zero. If I don't do that, then the ball keeps moving after I release the key. And after the values of the velocity components are set, I can add those values to the value of the both positions like the 
x component of the velocity will be added to the x position and the y component of the velocity will be added to the y position and if I run the code oops it really goes very fast downhills yeah that's better so it still works the same way apparently but still dividing the velocity into an x and a y component made it theoretically possible to move the ball in more than just eight directions now the question is how to take advantage of this by setting the value of the velocity property what I'm really setting is how many pixels should be the difference between coordinates at two consecutive frames. If the velocity is 10 and I keep pressing the left arrow key, then the X coordinate of the ball will decrease by 10 for each frame. That's why the velocity is the change of position over time. But as I mentioned, the ball has now only one specific velocity value. If I press the left arrow, key it starts with the velocity of 10 if I release it then it stops immediately so the question is how can I make it smoother how can I constantly increase the velocity so that the ball would keep going faster and faster and that's where acceleration comes in which is the change of velocity over time the position here is changing based on the value of the velocity component which is either zero then the ball is not moving in that direction or equals to the velocity properties value in that case it's heading along the x or the y axis in either positive or negative direction now let's change this velocity property to acceleration and i set it to one and i create one acceleration property bound to the x and one acceleration property bound to the y axis now if an arrow key is pressed and the boolean value is true then instead of setting one of the velocity components to the velocity properties value which doesn't even exist anymore I set one of the acceleration components to the acceleration properties value. That's the one I just created. And by releasing the key, the acceleration component will be zero, which means that the velocity stops changing and the ball will move with constant speed it doesn't mean that it will stop and here below the position of the ball will still be determined by the velocity components but this time those velocity components will keep changing based on the values of the based on the values of the acceleration components And now, this is two, and now if I go back to the if I go back to the canvas, then I can see that first of all the ball goes in many different directions, definitely more than just eight. And it also increases and decreases its velocity if I press a key instead of moving in a constant speed. If I release the key, then the value of the velocity won't change so then it keeps moving in a constant speed just like it did last time if i don't want it to go off the screen so easily then i can add the friction variable that will decrease the absolute value of the velocity components by multiplying them by a number between zero and one so if the friction is zero then it means that there is no friction and if it's one that means that the ball will not move at all 
So I'm creating now this friction variable and I set its value to 0 0.1. And before changing the value of the position here, the velocity will be multiplied by 1 minus friction. So let's check it. And now if I release a key, then the velocity will be slower. It will be constantly decreasing and at the end the ball will stop moving. And the last thing I want to do in this episode is just for visual purposes to display the current velocity and acceleration of the ball in every frame. I create a new method in the ball class called display and all it will do is drawing two lines. Both of them will start in the center point and the end point of the first one will be in the direction of where the acceleration components point and I will set that line to green. And another line's end point will be in the direction where the velocity components point. That one will be blue. I need to call that method in the iteration through the balls array, even if now there is only one ball. And let's see. The lines are there, but they are too short. So if I want them to keep pointing in the same direction but also make them longer then I need to multiply both components by the same number so let's try multiplying by 100 in the acceleration and for the velocity I will use 10 and try again. It's better. So I can see that the green line, the acceleration, is only going in eight different directions, but the velocity and hence the ball itself can take more, which provides a smoother movement. And that's it for this episode. In the next one, I will focus on working with vectors.